Well, good morning and welcome to this time of morning prayer. Um, it is actually raining this morning, um, so this could be tricky and I might have to abandon part way and head inside, but we'll see how we get on. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Hallelujah. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory for ever, as once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land. So now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen Son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day you have made and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. And the Easter anthems to praise our Lord. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us, so let us celebrate the feast not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying, he died to sin once for all. In living, he lives to God. See yourselves, therefore, as dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead, the firstfruits of those who sleep. For as by man came death, by man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. And we thank you, Lord, for bringing us safely to the beginning of this new day, and ask that in the same we may neither run into sin or fall into any kind of danger, but that everything we say, think and do may be governed by you to do always what is righteous in your sight, for Jesus' sake. And as we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And Psalm 44. Well, I'm about to be joined by Blackbird. <laughs> Psalm 44. So, Psalm 45. My heart is stirred by a noble theme as I recite my verses for the king. My tongue is the pen of a skilful writer. You are the most excellent of men, and your lips have been anointed with grace since God has blessed you forever. Gird your sword on your side, you mighty one. Clothe yourself with splendour and majesty. In your majesty ride forth victoriously in the cause of truth, humility and justice. Let your right hand achieve awesome deeds. Let your sharp arrows pierce the hearts of the king's enemies. Let the nations fall beneath your feet. Your throne, O God, will last for ever and ever. A scepter of justice will be the scepter of your kingdom. You love righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore God, your God, has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy. All your robes are fragrant with myrrh and aloes and cassia. From palaces adorned with ivory, the music of the strings makes you glad. Daughters of kings are among your honoured women. At your right hand is the royal bride in gold of Ophir. Listen, daughter, and pay careful attention. Forget your people and your father's house. Let the king be enthralled by your beauty. Honour him, for he is your lord. 
The city of Tyre will come with a gift. People of wealth will seek your favour. All glorious is the princess within her chamber. Her gown is interwoven with gold, embroidered garments, that she is led to her king. Her virgin companions follow her, those brought to be with her, led in joy and gladness. They enter the palace of the king. Your sons will take the place of your fathers. You will make them princes throughout the land. I will perpetuate your memory through all generations. Therefore the nations will praise you forever. And Isaiah chapter 47. Go down, sit in the dust, virgin daughter Babylon. Sit on the ground without a throne, queen city of the Babylonians. No more will you be called tender or delicate. Take millstones and grind flour, take off your veil. Lift up your skirts, bear your legs, and wade through the streams. Your nakedness will be exposed, and your shame uncovered. I will take vengeance, I will spare no one. Our Redeemer, the Lord Almighty is his name, is the Holy One of Israel. Sit in silence, go into darkness, Queen City of the Babylonians. No more will you be called Queen of Kingdoms. I was angry with my people and desecrated my inheritance. I gave them into your hand and you showed them no mercy. Even on the aged you laid a very heavy yoke. You said, I am forever the eternal queen. But you did not consider these things or reflect on what might happen. Now then, listen, you lover of pleasure and lounging in your security and saying to yourself, I am, there is none besides me. I will never be a widow or suffer the loss of children. Both of these will overtake you in a moment, on a single day, loss of children and widowhood. They will come upon you in full measure in spite of your many sorceries and all your potent spells. You have trusted in your wickedness and have said, no one sees me. Your wisdom and knowledge mislead you when you say to yourself, I am, and there is none besides me. Disaster will come upon you, and you will not know how to conjure it away. A calamity will fall upon you that you cannot ward off with a ransom. A catastrophe you cannot foresee will suddenly come upon you. Keep on then with your magic spells and with your many sorceries which you have laboured since your childhood. Perhaps you will succeed. Perhaps you will cause terror. All the counsel you have received has only worn you out. Let your astrologers come forward, those stargazers who make predictions month by month. Let them save you from what is coming upon you. Surely, they are like stubble. The fire will burn them up. They cannot even save themselves from the power of the flame. These are not coals for warmth. This is not a fire to sit by. That is all they are to you. These you have dealt with and laboured with since childhood. All of them go on in their error. There is not one that can save you. And so let's turn to prayer. And Heavenly Father, those two passages vividly paint the contrast between uh, the bride of uh, the king, uh, your church, your people, and the glorious future that you have prepared for them, and the self-declared queen uh, of Babylon and her fate. And Lord, from the perspective of history, we can see how the fall of Babylon took place just as you said it would, and none of their wisdom, their sorceries, their idols, their wealth, nothing could save them. And they are now just dust in the desert. And yet your kingdom and your church stands forever as your bride. And we pray that we may never be presumptuous, but always be humble before you, and grateful and thankful, and seek to honour you as our heavenly bridegroom, the one who has given himself for us uh, to make us um, fitting to be with you forever. In Jesus' name. Amen.
And Lord, we pray this day for um, our church community and thinking especially of those names either side of ours and our contact list. We pray for those households and we pray for their practical needs. We pray for opportunities for them to uh, be witnesses to their neighbours. I pray for their times of uh, reading the Bible and prayer today, that they may know you with them and that your spirit will well up within them as streams of living water overflowing to others. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. And Heavenly Father, we pray for those um, who are in trouble with respect to work at the moment. Uh, those who have been furloughed and not sure what to do with their time. Those who have lost their businesses. Uh, those uh, that are seeking work and there's no recruitment going on. For all those people in their frustration in this time of limbo and with a real desire to be getting on with life and being, being involved in, in, in making, earning a living and making ends meet for themselves. Lord, we pray for them and pray that uh, in due course uh, the economy will pick up and there will be opportunities for all these people to get back into work. For Jesus' sake. Amen. And we pray today for uh, the schools. And we thank you for those that are going in to enable the children of key workers and vulnerable children to be supported. Uh, we thank you that uh, while many of their colleagues will be at home, that they are still there um, supporting and caring for those children. And we pray that this will be a profitable time for those young people. Uh, we thank you for the opportunities to provide Christian resources um, for, for assemblies, for collective worship, not only for those children that are in school, but for the children that are following things online. And pray that uh, through this, uh, there'll be a witness to Jesus Christ in each home within this parish. For Jesus' sake, Amen. God of life, before our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of our enemy. Grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, as our Saviour taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the risen Christ grant us the joy of eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.